Bend Around the Wind by Sky Leah. Chapter 21. You, you, and B, part two. They took the dune runner with them. It was luckily also using solar energy instead of fuel like everything seemed to in this galaxy. It made sense. Sunlight was free and their solar technology was way more advanced than that of Earth's. If Tony would not be so busy with his suit, he would definitely research it some more. Womlar was a lot like Earth's. The gravity was almost completely the same and it seemed to have a similar climate. The part where they landed had green fields and some forests, but not a jungle, thankfully. They loaded a few crates of repair parts they planned to sell into the Dune Runner and also some other stuff they could bargain with. Tony had absolutely no use for the parts because he had no idea what kind of vehicle they were for. Plus, they had plenty of it. They could have waited until his suit was ready to make their next landing, but Tony decided against it. Loki was armed and armored. Tony was armed and could finally be understood by anyone. Also, this was the last planet they could land on in this system. After this, they had a few months of nothing but empty space ahead of them. So it was best to try their luck here. The similarities to Earth ended when they reached the city. The buildings were nothing like on Earth in their shapes, and the planet's inhabitants were, well... Purple. They were small, too. Smaller even than Tony, and about five feet in average, even if there were some taller ones in Tony's height. They had some sort of antennas on their heads, and also only two fingers on each hand. It was weird, but at least they were not lizards. Tony really started to dislike lizards. Loki was ridiculously tall to begin with, but compared to the locals, he was a giant. Tony told him as much, which weirdly earned him a very murderous glare. He had no idea what that was about, but he shrugged it off. Loki was easy to piss off, but he easily calmed it down, too, with the right words, even if he collected grudges like a magpie. Maybe that was also a chaos god thing. Loki, the god of chaos and fiery temper. Hmm, there was something about fire now that he thought about it. He would have to ask when Loki was in a better mood. Tony was getting better and better at using the right tone with him, but sometimes he felt like he said the worst things without knowing why they were wrong. There was nothing to do about it, but keep them in mind. The wobs, as it turned out they were called, were easy to deal with. Or maybe they were just intimidated by Tony and Loki towering over them. Or maybe just by Loki. Tony was all smiles to compensate for it, and he enjoyed that he finally could speak to someone who was not Loki. Not that it was boring to talk with Loki, but it still felt good to speak and be understood by others. They sold two crates of repair parts to a merchant after making sure that he was not screwing them over with the price. Then they used the freshly acquired local currency to buy stuff they needed. Tony got his lenses for a telescope, some crystals, and a few other things he needed to build the new DNI for his suit. Loki, again, bought a bunch of weird stuff Tony had no idea what was for. He was pretty sure one of them was a bag of some sort of animal bones, but he didn't say anything. Loki's little collection of weirdness saved his life once already, so it was not his place to argue. They also managed to get a few smaller things that were still needed for the workshop. Tony would certainly have plenty of things to occupy himself with in the upcoming months of boring traveling. Then they went and got themselves some clothes. Nothing fancy, nothing too extravagant, just things that were necessary. Tony got himself some thicker and better fitting boots, a thick coat, and some other clothes in case they went somewhere cold. Some shirts and underwear, and finally some pants that fit perfectly and not just so-so. He was really glad that he was not so tall right about now. No clothes would have fit otherwise. It was hard to find some even like this. Loki was not so lucky, so he just got himself some leather, surprisingly. When Tony asked, he just shrugged and said he could at least make something suitable instead of having to wear such horrible garments. At least he could buy a pair of knee-high boots that fit. And he could also pick up some normal things like sacks and underwear that were not too little. Clearly, Wub Dalers never had to make clothes for someone over six feet tall. He bought a scarf, too. Who knew why? Because as far as Tony knew, he did not get cold, but he didn't ask. He was just glad Loki didn't want a cape of some sort. Tony bought a scarf, too, then. Who knew? He might need it. Tony also bought a bucket of paint. When Loki looked at him curiously, Tony reminded him of the claw marks and other scratches on the drake. 
Loki did not see why it needed to be fixed, but he did not argue. It's not like they had anything else to spend their money on. After they had everything important they could buy in the city, they spent the last of their currency on some fresh food, because while they had plenty of food on the ship, those were all, like, astronaut food. Plenty of nutrition and all that you needed to stay alive and healthy, but not too big on taste. They also never went bad. So that was good, but still, it felt good to have something new. Loki was a fruit-eating type, as it turned out, because he wanted a lot of it, and Tony couldn't decide whether that fitted him perfectly or not at all. All in all, this was their most successful trip yet. Nobody tried to kill them or eat them, and they bought everything they could. Tony knew his rules were good, he knew this trip would be different, and he was right. The sun was setting by the time they drove out of the city to head back to the Drake. After the noise of people vanished, Tony started chattering away as per usual while Loki listened and sometimes offered some commentary. It was pleasant. Tony liked it. The whole day put him in a good mood. Then all of a sudden, he heard a scream and he stopped the dune runner before he could think twice about it. What? Loki asked. Didn't you hear that? Yes. And? Loki asked, obviously not concerned. Tony frowned and looked around in the almost darkness, trying to figure out where the sound came from. Then there it was again. A shout or a scream, obviously female. He moved right away, reaching back for his gun and getting out. Loki grabbed onto him, though. What do you think you're doing? He asked. Someone's in trouble. Tony answered. No, this has nothing to do with you. Loki argued, not letting go of him. That doesn't matter. I'm not going to just walk away. Stop with this heroic nonsense! We have our own problems! We do not need the burden of others! Maybe you could just turn your back and ignore something like this. Tony started, but I'm not that kind of guy. Finally, he managed to slip out of Loki's grasp, and he was out of the Dune Runner the next second. If I can help, I will. He headed towards where the scream came from while Loki cares behind him. Stark! He called after him, but Tony did not care. Maybe he was not the best kind of hero. Maybe he was not a hero at all, but he would not drive by after hearing something like that. He couldn't. If he ever turned into someone like that, someone capable of that, he would never be able to look himself in the mirror again. It was already hard enough to do it. He almost ran down the path that led away from the road they were driving on. It took him only a few minutes to get there. Local guys, four of them. One was a little bit taller than average and dressed a bit better than the other three. Those were smaller but thicker muzzle guys. Tony was still taller than them and had a big gun, so he was not too concerned. They all looked in his direction when they heard him approaching. When he was close enough, he could finally see who screamed before. Not one, but two green figures were lying on the ground. One of them was obviously unconscious. She had long, dark hair that hit her face and was only wearing some sort of very thin dress. Not even shoes. She was dirty and her dress was torn. She obviously struggled before they knocked her out. The other one had the same sort of green skin and pointed ears, but she looked taller. Tall as Tony, at least, or bigger. She had shorter hair, a purplish-gray, barely reaching her shoulders, messily cut. Reptilian, obviously, now that Tony looked at her. There were ridges on her chin, but otherwise Tony could not see any scales on her or anything of sorts. Her eyes were wide and green and shining, scared but hard at the same time. She kept one hand on the unconscious girl as she stared at Tony, but she did not turn her back to the wob men standing there. Well, good evening, Tony greeted, keeping his gun in his hand. What's happening here? Nothing, stranger. Walk away, one of the wobs told him. Yeah, you see, that's not going to happen. How about you step away from the girls while I'm still in a good mood and nobody gets hurt? Mm. The taller wob narrowed his eyes at him, but neither of them moved. Do you have any idea how much damage this gun can do in something so little as you? Tony asked in an even tone. And whatever you've been doing here makes me really eager to pull the trigger, so I won't warn you again. I treat my pets how I want, the taller one answered angrily. They're mine. I paid good money for them. Don't think I'm gonna let some bandit steal from me. Bandit, that was rich, but it also told him more about the picture in front of his eyes. The girl that was awake was still staring at him. There was intelligence in the gaze, so pet did not really apply, which probably meant slaves or something, and that just left a really unpleasant feeling in Tony's gut. The three smaller wobs had some sort of guns with them, too, slightly different from the energy guns Tony saw so far. Don't risk your hide for some disobedient beasts. The dollar one spoke again. Yeah, wrong answer. You should really just walk away. 
Tony told them. You don't scare me, the wub replied. How about me? Came Loki's voice, and holy crap, Tony did not even notice him. He was right behind the small group of wobs, who all spun around immediately, very startled and kind of panicky. One of them raised a gun just to be backhanded by the god. Loki looked pretty pissed, and Tony knew it was not the wobs he was pissed at. Andre! The one Loki hit went down without a sound, crumpled like a sack of potatoes. Not dead, though, just unconscious. Loki was clearly more intimidating, judging by the reactions of the remaining three, especially that not even the tallest wob reached the level of his chin. They kind of just stared at him for a long moment, frozen in place like tiny deer in the headlights of big, scary monster truck. One of them was stupid enough to shoot at him, but of course it did nothing. Tony was kind of fascinated by how the small energy blast simply vanished upon impact and how very unfazed Loki was about the shot. The god then reached out and grabbed the tallest one by the neck to lift him up to the level of his face. How about you run away before I rip out your guts and hang you up on a tree with it? He said in a low, threatening voice that made a small shiver run down Tony's spine. He also felt a rush of adrenaline in his blood. He knew that voice. Yes, he definitely heard that voice before, but not in a large time. Oh, he really pissed him off this time. Loki dropped to the wob, and a second later they did the smart thing and gathered their fourth companion and ran. Loki followed them with his gaze for a moment before his furious eyes landed on Tony. You set up some ridiculous rules, he started as he walked closer to Tony, and then you run off on your own just so you can play hero. I told you, I'm not the kind of guy who could just walk away from something like this. You can, and you will, Loki hissed. No, I won't. Tony shot back, his voice a little angrier. And I don't care if you agree or not. If it, there's something I can do, I will do it. I'm not some selfish bastard who only cares about himself. It was strange to say that, because that was exactly what he was accused of so many times. But he knew it was true. He had to believe it was true. That he still cared that all this time away from Earth, all that he's been through, all that he did to survive, did not change him that much. That it did not change this. Yes, you are! When you ended you yourself, you ended your me! Well, guess what? My life does not revolve around you. I can do whatever I please, and you will have to deal with it. Loki's face darkened further in anger, but Tony kept his face stern and resolute. He will not back off, and he will not be intimidated. You listen to me, Stark! Loki started, almost the same threatening tone he used with the wobs. If you think, even for a second, that I... Thank you. Loki stopped abruptly, and both of them turned to look at the green girl sitting on the ground with the unconscious one half in her lap. Yeah, he still needed to deal with them. It looked like Loki wanted to keep arguing, but Tony sidestepped him and went to the girls. Who went down on one knee to be on eye level with her. How was your friend? Sister, the girl corrected. She had a firm, even voice, a hard tone with a hint of suspicion. Tony did not blame her. Okay, how was your sister? She's fine. She's been hit harder before, she answered curtly, while she ran her hands through the other's hair, getting it out of her face. The one lying on the ground looked more delicate, in a way. The shape of her face, her body structure, maybe she was younger. The short-haired one had more flesh and muscle on her bones, and a lot more scars, too, Tony noticed, now that he was close. And oh crap, they even had collars on. That was so messed up, on so many levels. It turned his stomach just thinking about it. What was your name? He asked. Ju Yu, she replied. Do you have anywhere to go, Ju Yu? Tony asked in return, and she shook her head as expected. Don't even think about it, Stark! Loki warned. He was probably glowering behind him, scowling and looking all dark and murderous. Tony didn't really care at the moment. I assume you're not from this planet? Tony said. She frowned at him in confusion. We're scrolls, she replied, like it should have been obvious. And, yeah, in this part of the universe, it probably was. Oh, okay. Tony nodded. He knew about the scrolls by now, of course. Loki told him plenty about them. Tony did not expect them to look like green elves, though. Do you know what planet you're from? Stark! Loki barked at him again. Would it kill you to not be a complete jerk for two seconds? If you're not going to help, then just shut up. 
He was angry, yeah, but that came out even angrier than intended. He seriously expected to be at least punched in the face for it. Loki glared at him. Oh, did he glare. His fists were clenched tight as well. His whole body tensed in anger. He was starting to think that Loki was going to make him regret this. He still would not give in. No way. He could deal with a pissed off Loki, no problem. It's not like he did not have to do it before. We're not from anywhere, Ju Yu replied. We've always been just taken from one place to another. I thought the Skrulls were in charge of this galaxy, Tony said. In other systems, maybe, Ju Yu told him. Her sister started to stir then. Step back, she told Tony immediately, holding out a hand as if to push him away. What? Just please, she said, and Tony did so just before the smaller one opened her eyes. And wow, okay, that was unexpected because her eyes were red and not green like her sister's. Two large angry rubies staring out of her delicate face. She shot upright immediately, and if not for you, you putting an arm around her middle, she would have been on Tony in a moment. He was pretty sure her nails were about to go for his eyes. It's all right. They helped. They helped. B, calm down. It's fine. It took a few moments before the girl stopped struggling and attempting to murder him. Tony stepped back a bit more and tried to look non-threatening. She looked at Tony for long moments, looking him over, her eyes fierce and unblinking. She's just upset, Ju said. No, it's fine, Tony reassured her. The girl, B, was still staring at him. Then her red eyes finally slid to the side and locked on Loki. If it would have been Tony, he would have been unnerved by the blank face and the unblinking stare. He was unnerved even like this. But Loki just stared right back, definitely not making any attempt to look harmless. Not that he could ever look harmless. But he really could have tried for the sake of the traumatized girl. Jerk. Both Tony and Yu Yu stayed silent for a few moments, but the staring did not stop. So Tony went back to find a possible solution for the problem. He really could not think of many things. Obviously, he could not just leave them here. Okay, so do you think you would be fine in the next system or in the next system on some scroll planet, maybe? He was surprised that Loki did not object again, but he seemed to be busy with the weirdest staring match ever. I don't know, Ju Yu replied. Right. Okay, we can't stay here. Let's just go somewhere else and we can talk about what to do, all right? Ju Yu nodded and touched her sister's arm. B? she asked. Is it okay to go with him? B just kept staring at Loki, then she got to her feet silently, pulling away from her sister's touch. She was small, that was the right word, small and thin and delicate, barely 5'1". That's a yes, Ju Yu said as she got up. Tony was right, she was his height. Loki scowled at Tony, then rolled his eyes in annoyance and started walking back to where they left the dune runner. B started following him without a word, so Tony and Ju Yu did too. How old is your little sister? Tony asked. She's my elder sister, Ju Yu replied. I'm just tall, she said. But she's not a child, if that's what you're asking. I'm not a child either. Tony nodded, even if he did not re really believe that. He looked at the angry lines of Loki's shoulders and how the little scrawl girl followed him, then to Ju Yu walking beside him. Her face looked young, very, very young, despite the scars and the stubborn set of her jaw. Then he realized that he had absolutely no idea what he was doing.